What's up, everybody? Hi, and welcome to Uncle Scott's Kitchen. Today, we've got a big in-depth review and feature on this guy. This is a Debouillet French-made carbon steel 12 and a half inch wok. What we're going to do in today's video is first run through its stats and features, take its vitals, get to know the pan. Second, this is a carbon steel wok. Carbon steel needs to be seasoned. We'll give it its initial cleaning and seasoning. And third, most importantly, I'm really looking forward to this the most, is putting this wok through its paces, cook a bunch of hopefully delicious food. Going to find out, is this a good quality wok? Does it produce delicious food? Is it a good value for the money? Let's get started. Okay, this wok is made by Debouillet. They're a French company. We've reviewed a bunch of Debouillet products around here, especially those in their Mineral B Pro and Mineral B line of carbon steel pans and skillets. I've had really good luck with them, and when I saw this wok in that Mineral B line, I decided to jump on it and try one of those as well. Now this thing lists for about $100 normally. I happened to run across this on the Debouillet website back around Thanksgiving when they ran that big Black Friday sale. I actually got it for 30% off with free shipping. So. I ended up paying with sales tax somewhere right around $75 for this wok. Now even on sale, that is still pretty steep for a wok. Now this thing, when you first pick it up, you notice that it's got a lot of heft to it. It weighs in at almost five pounds. Contributing to that weight is the two millimeter thickness of the carbon steel, which might be a little thin for a frying pan, but actually pretty thick compared to lots of woks out there that are in the 1.5 millimeter range. Normally with carbon steel frying pans, I like a thicker, heavier pan, but with a wok where there will be lots of movement and flipping of food, we'll see if that weight becomes a problem. The next thing that jumps out at me is the wok shape. It seems a little conical, maybe a little vertical. It's a flat bottom wok, not a round bottom, which allows it to sit on a flat top stove or a gas cooking grate. But what worries me here is that the flat cooking surface part is only four inches or so wide with its height and long handle relative to the small flat surface, I'm worried that it might be a little unstable. In fact, it tumps over pretty easily and I don't want to dump a wok full of sizzling stir fry on my foot. And speaking of that handle, it's attached with three rivets and is in the strip steel fashion like other pans in the Mineral B lineup. It's not got a big wooden grip like many woks you see. Also, it's a coated handle. That means it can't be used in the oven. Now you're not gonna do much wok cooking in your oven anyway, but that may be a big deal for people with the flat top stoves, either electric or induction, who can have trouble seasoning carbon steel on their flat tops and need to use their ovens to season their pans. Speaking of the seasoning, let's jump into that. Now this is a carbon steel wok. Carbon steel is a great material for high temperature cooking. You do see some non-stick coated woks out there, but they can be dangerous in off-gas toxic fumes at temperatures typically seen in wok stir-fry cooking. Carbon steel can handle it much better. But carbon steel is a reactive metal. It will rust if exposed to air or especially water, so it needs to be seasoned. The seasoning protects the pan from rust and also begins to establish a natural non-stick layer kind of sort of like cast iron skillets. As such, carbon steel can't go in the dishwasher. It needs to be hand washed, then dried immediately. In carbon steel, you also shouldn't use acidic ingredients, things like tomatoes, lemon juice, or lots of vinegar. These will eat away at the seasoning you've built up and can react with the metal and give your food a metallic taste. And we don't want that. Now, Debouillet's instruction booklet, if you can read it, doesn't really have any wok specific directions. It's more of a general Debouillet carbon steel booklet. It calls for washing off most, but not all, of the beeswax with hot water, no mention of soap, and asks that you leave a little bit of beeswax behind as this should help with the initial seasoning. Note that this is different and less intensive than the potato peel, oil, and salt initial seasoning method we use with some Matford carbon steel pans and skillets, for example. Now, Debouillet says to pour one millimeter or so of a high smoke point oil in the pan, bring it up to smoking, wipe it out, and then you are ready to go. Now, I decided to change this up a little as putting that oil in the small cooking surface area didn't really seem right for a wok, so I'm going to go with a few thin coats and bring it up to smoking. 
So immediately what I found is that the high heat on a gas burner is more concentrated in certain areas than others. The wok seasoned easily at the bottom, but I got a few stickier bits of oil up near the top. So what I found that I needed to do was hold the handle and rotate the wok over the flame of my gas stove to get that oil to harden and darken up near the top. And I did this a couple of times. Now the seasoning is not dark black and is still blotchy, but I decided to jump in with a fried egg test just to check it. And here we go. In goes some butter, in goes the egg, and boom. This might be the best sliding egg of my egg sliding career. I could do this all day long. Full of confidence, I decided to go for a flip and... Well, I give my sliding an A and my flipping technique maybe an F minus. Needs improvement. But the good news is we've got the wok clean, giving it a great initial seasoning, and we're ready to do some cooking. Performance and cooking tests. So how does the wok perform? Well, it's really a mixed bag. And here I want to say that there is some upside and there's some downside. On the upside, at a high level, I ended up getting some absolutely delicious food produced by this wok. In fact, I ended up gaining 2.8 pounds just reviewing this thing. Pretty solid work. On the downside, however, it took a lot of finagling to get that delicious food. I had some problems with the seasoning. I had some problems with the heating. I had some problems with stability. Let's jump in and look at a few details and show you what I mean. What I did was get some fresh ingredients, a bunch of Asian ingredients, a bunch of rice, a few frozen items, a bunch of Costco boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Holy cow, did we eat some chicken? And I watched about nine zillion YouTube videos on fried rice and all and just started cooking. I also did a bunch of checking with the old Etec City temperature gun while using the wok on a variety of burners and cooktops, both with and without a wok ring. For testing, on my gas stove, I've got a smaller 7500 BTU burner, a medium 10,000 BTU burner, and a thermonuclear 15,000 BTU burner. Now that high output burner is great for larger pasta pots, bringing water up to boil quickly. Really works well there. We'll see if it works with the more narrow wok here in a minute. I use my regular burner grates and also a wok ring attachment made for this stove. I also did some testing on an electric flat top and an induction burner as well. Now I'm jumping around a bit, but let's take a look at the flat tops first and see how the wok heats, which I'll illustrate with some maintenance seasoning I tried to do. Now the wok has that four inch flat cooking surface, so there is relatively little contact with the burners. I found that both the electric and the induction would get the small cooking surface very hot, but the sides of the wok were significantly cooler. For example, after five minutes cranked up on high, the electric stove could get the base of the wok hotter than 800 degrees, absolutely screaming hot, and way, way beyond what you need for seasoning. In fact, it was so hot that it ended up burning some of the seasoning off near the bottom of the wok and actually almost kind of blued the carbon steel. Now, carbon steel doesn't readily conduct heat anywhere near like something like copper does, for example. So while the base was 800 degrees up near the sides and the rim of the wok, it was only a little over 100 degrees. So I know that when you use a wok, you have different temperature zones, but here I thought this was a little bit excessive. 800 at the bottom, 100 at the top, I had temperature differentials of over 600 degrees. Much, much hotter near the bottom and sort of a gradient up towards the top, which I'm not sure is good for one thing, but importantly here, it also means that on a flat top, you're not going to be able to season the entire wok. You could season the cooking surface and maybe an inch or two up the sides, but well less than half the wok was over 400 degrees and therefore would not season correctly. I had similar results on the induction burner. Very hot in the middle where there was contact, but way, way cooler up the sides. And remember here that we mentioned this wok has a coated handle. You can't just take it and season the wok in your oven. So if you have flat top electric or induction, I don't think you're gonna be able to season this wok correctly, and that's a problem. Those relatively cooler sides also mean that food is going to stick. For example, in this batch of fried rice cooked on the electric, Note that the steep sides kind of made the eggs pool in the small cooking area in the middle. The eggs are not spread out very much. 
Now everything on that small cooking surface did nicely. The eggs weren't sticking, but when I stirred the eggs, I got lots of stuff stuck on the relatively cooler sides. The sides are not hot enough. Also, the normal flipping and shaking people do with woks doesn't seem to work well on the flat tops either. For example, my induction burner shuts off if you remove a pan. So lifting the wok, shaking food, and resetting the burner over and over is particularly annoying. Now back on the electric, as I was lifting the pan and flipping fried rice and setting the pan back down on my glass flat top, that five pound weight really came into play. Really full of food, this wok could be up to around seven pounds. Now even though I'm massively strong and really, really powerful, when I would try and set that wok back down on the glass stove top, it was tough to do gently. It would make a big clank. Now, after hearing all that clanking, my wife came out and gave me what I think is some pretty good cooking advice. She looked at me and said, don't break that stove top. Now she kind of screeched it and I thought I would detect a little bit of a tone, but actually some pretty good cooking advice there for once. But for the flat tops, the electrics and the inductions, some of the problems here are general wok problems and some are specific to the debouille. Unfortunately, there's only a small flat cooking surface Seasoning is difficult, you might get lots of sticking up the sides of the wok, and the heaviness makes flipping and moving the wok difficult. So for me, for the flat tops, both this wok and probably most other woks are not going to be ideal for me. I'm going to avoid wok cooking on the flat tops. Sorry to say. What about cooking on the gas burners? Here things start to look up a bit. I cooked many dishes using the three gas burners, both with and without the wok ring, and took lots of temperature readings as well. Let me show you what I learned. I started with searing some meat, and I cut up a bunch of those boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I figured the dark meat should handle higher heat a little bit better than white meat would, and I fully expect to overcook the chicken just a little at first as I learn how this wok cooks. I started with the medium burner, put on the wok ring, cranked up the gas, and cooked batches of chicken. Here I learned not to overcrowd the wok, to go in smaller batches. If you overcrowd and the meat releases water, it can steam for a bit until the moisture evaporates away, and then it will brown. Now it's not the end of the world, but the texture of the meat can suffer a bit. Smaller batches work better. Here I note that the sides of the wok seem pretty steep, and the meat seems to slide down and kind of pile up into that smaller cooking area. I think a wider cooking surface would be better as one pack of these chicken thighs contains four thighs and it seemed to take about four batches of cooking per pack. So on the one hand, cooking in batches seems to produce better results. On the other hand, that first batch of chicken is going to be sitting there and sogging for maybe eight to 10 minutes or so before that fourth batch is done. The chicken had some nice browning, it was pretty good. There were a few sticky bits on the pan which I deglazed with hot water and they cleaned right up. Deglazing works very well to clean up carbon steel. Next is some egg fried rice with chicken. Smaller burner using the wok ring. I have the bottom of the pan over 400 degrees. The sides are a little cooler. In go the eggs, get those cooked, remove those. Then I sauteed my onion and carrots. In go some jasmine rice. Back in go the eggs, some peas, soy sauce, stir, stir, stir. Add a few sesame seeds at the end. Now the fried rice was delicious and we ate it all up. But on this burner, I thought the texture wasn't perfect and perhaps I got some sticking on the sides of the wok, similar to what happened on the electric. When I cleaned the stock fried rice off, I ended up taking off some of the seasoning. And here I want to show one way I did some touch-up seasoning. Instead of re-seasoning the entire wok, I got it hot, added a little oil to a paper towel, and then just wiped it around the bottom part, very thin layer, which immediately began to smoke. Now I am not recommending anyone try this at home as I do not enjoy depositions. However, what I did was make sure to keep a big layer of paper towels between my hand and the searing hot metal, got in and got out quickly. It worked really well for darkening in that one area without having to re-season the entire wok. So I made more and more batches of fried rice using different burners and found that if I use my high output burner and got the sides of the wok hotter and used a little more oil, it worked much better and I got a lot less sticking. A couple of fried rice notes here. Uh, a lot of people use oyster sauce in conjunction with soy sauce for their fried rice. 
I found that I just don't enjoy that oyster sauce. Just me. I just like the soy sauce. And also, I note that people get on to me in my other videos when I use butter to cook fried eggs. Here I note that I used oil to cook the eggs. I added oil when I sauteed the veggies. I added more oil when I put in the rice. I added more oil when I put in the soy sauce. I probably ended up with four or five tablespoons of oil in this batch of fried rice. So on the one hand, you hear stir fry. Sometimes it has kind of a healthier connotation to it. I found that a week of eating stir fried carbs really did help me pack on those 2.8 pounds. Not quite as healthy and light as perhaps it might seem. <laughs> Veggie stir fry. Here, instead of fresh ingredients, I admit I used a bag of Costco frozen stir fried veggies. Obviously, they're not fresh. They're a little heavy on the broccoli, but on the upside, they're very convenient and it includes nine ingredients. Now, if I were making stir fry with fresh veggies, honestly, I probably would not go to the grocery store and buy nine bags of fresh ingredients. So I do like the variety of the Costco pack. Interestingly here, the bag says to add the veggies frozen, not thawed, which I did. I tried them on that medium burner again, and it was like adding little ice cubes. The wok temp dropped from well over 400 degrees to the middle 200s. Granted, I was adding frozen food that gave off some moisture, but even cranked up to high, that medium burner took a long time to bring the bottom of the pan back up to heat while the sides were really roasting. Here I'm going to admit something about fresh, crunchy broccoli. I hate it, but rather my digestive tract hates it and immediately tries to purge my entire system, often painfully. So although the package says to cook these veggies five to seven minutes, I went more like nine to 11 minutes, which actually worked out well as the burner took a long time to come back up to temp anyway. But I note that on this fancy gas stove, that medium burner while using the wok ring did not produce that quick two to three minute high temp stir fry cooking time, which you really want with a wok. And here's a little cooking trick for you. You know what I like to add to my veggie stir fry to make it taste better? Meat. 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 More chicken thighs. I put that chicken and veggie stir fry over some jasmine rice and it's pretty darn tasty. Kung Pao chicken. Here more, yes more, chicken thighs. I started by stir frying some fresh red bell peppers on the small burner, which worked fine. Then I went back to the medium burner for the marinated chicken. Cooked it in batches, then added it to another pan. This one a Debouillet Copper, which I reviewed a few months back where I had added the peppers and was making the sauce with some green onions, peanuts, and all. As I've learned how the wok cooks, here I cook the chicken a little bit less and let it finish cooking by simmering it in the sauce. The Kung Pao chicken turned out nice and colorful and really, really good. I started doing more tests, both with and without the wok ring and taking some readings with the temp gun. The wok ring makes the unit more stable, obviously, but on the downside, with this wok's conical shape, it really seems to sit way down there in it. And you noticeably have to lift it up and out before you flip any food, which is a little bit difficult given the wok's weight. The ring also lifts the wok a little, so it's a little further from the flame. And believe it or not, a little distance actually makes a lot of difference. So I found that I could get the wok hotter by placing it directly on my gas cooking grates. However, due to the small flat cooking surface and the shape of my grates, it was very unsteady. I also found that on the high output burner, the wok almost seemed to sit down in there too much. I didn't like that. Now for a little data, I found that on the smaller burner, I could get the cooking surface to 500 degrees and the sides a little bit lower, but adding food really dropped the temp and it took too long to recover. On the medium burner, I would say the performance was okay. Cooking surface temps were solidly over 500 degrees and would drop when food was added. But the temps would recover to over 400 fairly quickly, still sizzling hot, but maybe not the best for quick high temp stir frying. Now on my bigger burner, I could get flames shooting all the way up the sides of the wok. I could get those just screaming hot, but because the burner is wider for bigger pots and the wok has that smaller cooking surface, there was actually less heat directly underneath the wok. Side screaming hot, middle not quite as high. Now let's illustrate how this affects cooking with some beef and broccoli. I cut up some beef flank steaks into thin strips, marinated them for a bit, then cooked them on the three different burners. On the small burner, 
high as I could get it, the beef released some water and boiled and then cooked. Now this is similar to what happens when I brown supermarket ground beef in other skillets. It releases moisture, boils for a bit, then when it evaporates, the beef browns. So this isn't unheard of, but not ideal for stir fry. And here I got some sticking, but I deglazed those sticky bits with some beef stock and added them to my sauce for later. On the medium burner, it was okay, but it still required me to cook in batches and the meat did not sear quickly. And on the high output burner, what I discovered is that the one way this wok really seemed to perform well and produce what I would consider to be closer to true wok cooking was to remove the ring and simply manually hold the wok so that the high output flame hit it directly under the bottom. Now it worked pretty well for cooking the meat. I got nice searing and browning on the meat quickly, but I had to hold the wok the entire time. The handle got hot and if I needed to grab an ingredient or set it down for a moment, the wok was unstable. It didn't sit well on that burner by itself. So on the smaller burners, I got meat that was cooked. It was okay. On the high output burner, if I held the wok, I could get good searing and quick browning and cooking more close to what I think wok stir fry cooking should be. Again, with the broccoli, I had parboiled my broccoli for a few minutes, let it drain and dry for a bit before stir frying it. I added the sauce and the batches of beef and it was actually really delicious. But again, reiterating what I said at the beginning of the video, I ended up getting some delicious food out of this wok, but it really did take some finagling. So even keeping the same width, I think if the wok were a little less conical and had a wider cooking surface, it would be much more stable and easier to get a flame from a normal home gas stove more concentrated under the bottom. So overall, how'd this wok do? Normally, I love the Bouillet products. This wok, unfortunately, I don't love. Now, on the upside, it's still a de Bouillet Mineral B product. Very high quality, very solid, very well built, good carbon steel. On the downside, I think the shape is not right for my burners and probably lots of other people's burners. If you have a flat top, an electric or an induction, I would probably, unfortunately, just almost avoid wok cooking altogether. I think if you use a cast iron skillet, you can get pretty darn close without all the headaches. Now on a home gas stove, if you have grates that are stable, if you have a high output gas burner and can get that burner, get that flame concentrated, underneath the smaller cooking surface area of this wok, you might be pretty darn happy with it. But for me, given the headaches I had trying to get that superior cooking performance with it on the stovetops I have here at my house, and given the premium price, I just think this one might not be worth it. So not a complete thumbs down, but a moderate thumbs down for the Debouillet Carbon Steel 12 and a half inch French made wok. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful, make sure you subscribe to the old channel, click notifications so that you're notified when new videos come out. Leave your questions, comments below the video. Check out the shopping links so you get a chance. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Kitchen.